guys, happy Thursday. It looks like we are live. Had some tech issues for a second there. Started to panic, but it looks like we're good. <laughs> Welcome back to Cook with Chris. I am so excited to cook with all of you guys today. Today we are cooking one of my favorite weeknight dinners. I feel like I say that every week, but really, I love this one, especially in the springtime. It is fresh, it is easy to prepare, it is family friendly, um, and it's delicious. So I'm going to share with you the ingredients that I'm going to use, and we'll go ahead and we'll get cooking. This is about a 25 minute recipe from start to finish. If you're not chatting like me, it'll probably take me a little bit longer than 25 minutes to get through it just because I'll be chatting with you guys, but we'll see, right? So all you're gonna need for this recipe is, okay, orzo is the main ingredient, but I know that I have a lot of my followers who are gluten-free. So there is gluten-free orzo available and my favorite substitute for orzo, which by the way, if you didn't know, orzo is not, a lot of people um, think it's a grain, but it's actually a pasta. It's a little tiny, like almost rice shaped pasta. So it does technically, it does typically, not technically, typically have gluten in it. My favorite substitute um, is there's a couple um, like chickpea based rices. So one of them is called Rizzoni from Trader Joe's. There's one by, I think the, I think the company is called Right Rice. Um, Bonza has a version and it cooks up just like orzo and works really well. So I wanted to start off by sharing that with you guys if you're like, oh, this sounds good, but I can't do orzo. If you can do orzo, do the real thing because it is absolutely delicious. But if not, that's a great alternative. And chickpea rice also has some fiber in it too. So orzo or chickpea rice is gonna be your first ingredient. That's going to be our base. This is a one pot recipe, okay? So I'm going to put the meatballs together in this pot, but everything is going over here. This is a hot plate, but normally it would be the stove. Everything is going together on the stove over here. So it's only one real pot to have to cook out, to cook out, clean out, you guys. I'm tired today. My allergies are kicking my booty lately. <laughs> so I'm a little bit tired. So we're gonna see how this goes. I might say some funny things today. Um, so it's basically just one pot that you have to clean at the end of the night, which is the best, right? For any of us who are busy mamas, it's awesome to have less dishes to clean because by the time we get to dinner time, we oftentimes already have a sink full of dishes, right? Okay, so you're gonna need some orzo. We're gonna make chicken meatballs. So I am using some ground chicken, but you can use whatever meat you want for this. You don't have to use chicken. You could use turkey if you wanted to use turkey instead of chicken, if you can't find ground chicken. You could also use beef if you wanted to, or you could use like an impossible meat if you wanted to as well, but some sort of a ground meat or meat sub. Um, you are going to want for the meatballs, almond flour, or you can also use panko breadcrumbs. I'm using almond flour just because I like that it adds a little bit of healthy fat. Um, and it's just, I always have almond flour on hand. It's my favorite breadcrumb substitute. You'll need an egg. If you can't do eggs, you can also use a chia or a flaxseed egg. I'm not going to explain that today, but send me a message if you want to know how to create that. Super easy. Salt and pepper. I use real salt, um, but any sort of fine grain sea salt, um, real salt, a mineral, uh, a mineral salt. Um, a high mineral salt is what I meant to say. Some sort of uh, black pepper, you're only gonna need a little bit, and some dried oregano. You're gonna want a lemon. We're gonna use the juice and the zest, so make sure you've got a whole lemon. We're gonna use my handy dandy microplane for that. You're gonna need some broth. This is actually only about a cup of broth. This is what I had left from recipe testing this weekend. If you don't have broth, you can also use water. I'm gonna use a combination because this is what I have left. Might as well use what I've got some sort of a spinach or another green. We're gonna put this in at the very end to wilt down just to add some greens to it. And to top, some feta. My favorite type of feta to use is feta in the brine. This is a sheep's milk feta. Yeah, this is a sheep and goat's milk feta. Um, the feta in the brine is a little bit more expensive and it is 1000% worth it. I talked about this when I talked about when we did um, my Greek wraps, you guys, thousand percent worth it. Get the feta in the brine. It has way better flavor. Yes, it's a little bit saltier, but the flavor is much better. You don't need as much of it for the, um, for the flavor. So get yourself some feta in brine. That's going to go on at the end. We don't actually need it right now. So what I'm actually going to do to make sure that we get all of this done kind of on time. So you guys aren't here with me for over an hour is I've got my, my pot on over here. And I'm just using a, um, a high-sided heavy bottom pan. You can use whatever wide pan or pot you want. 
Um, you just want it to, to be tall enough to cook the orzo. So I'm gonna start by cooking the orzo and then we're gonna get the meatballs done and I'm just gonna make them smaller and we're gonna put it all together. You are welcome to make the meatballs first and then start it all. Whatever order you wanna do it in, it'll work. But I wanna get the orzo to start cooking. So I'm gonna start with two cups of orzo. It'd be really helpful if I had some scissors to open. We got kid scissors, it'll work. <laughs> So we're gonna start with two cups of orzo and four cups of broth or water. And I'm just gonna add these right to the pan. Like I said, this is a one pot recipe. So we're gonna add these to the bottom of the pot. And if your meatballs were done, you could also add the meatballs just right on top. And we're gonna cover it, once it gets to a simmer, we're gonna cover it all and we're gonna cook it all together. Super easy. All right, so we've got two cups of the orzo and I'm gonna go ahead and add four cups of broth, okay? So you want double. And you might need a little bit more broth or water. You just wanna make sure that you are fairly close by um, to make sure that it doesn't get absorbed, but it only takes about 15 minutes. So it's not like this is a, a super long recipe where the, the orzo is gonna take a while. I'm gonna go get the rest of the broth or the water. I love a good recipe that you can hang out in the kitchen and do other things, but uh, it's not gonna take you a ton of time, right? That's what makes a weeknight recipe, right? The family likes it and it doesn't take a ton of time. All right, I'm just gonna get two more cups of broth and we'll get this simmering. So like I mentioned, orzo is pasta. So there's a couple ways that you can cook it. You can cook it just like you would cook any sort of pasta. You can bring a pot of water to a boil and you can add the orzo in and you can cook it. Let me see, what does my package say? Because I usually just cook it until it's done. But this package says boil up five minutes. Okay. So I am choosing a different method where I am just going to add the water and the orzo to the pan. I'm just giving it a little stir over here. I'm going to season it. If you're using broth that is homemade or not seasoned, you definitely want to season your orzo um, because there's the meatballs will be seasoned, but there's nothing else to season this. So I'm just stirring it. I'm going to give it a, a hefty sprinkle of salt. I'm going to cover it and just bring it to a simmer. And we're just gonna simmer it slowly until all of that water is absorbed. And again, you just wanna watch it to make sure um, it doesn't get too dry. You don't want the, the orzo to start sticking to the bottom. But this is a really easy way to cook orzo. Okay, so we're seasoned. I'm gonna put that on medium, just bring that to a simmer, and I'm gonna cover it, and let's get started with our meatballs. Once that's nice and hot, when we add the meatballs to it, it's gonna come together. The meatballs are gonna cook in no time. All right, so let's get to our meatballs. Like I said, whatever sort of meat you wanna use for this, you can, but I like the chicken just because it has a really mild flavor to it. I mean, obviously it's chicken. It's it's ground, this isn't chicken ground chicken breast. Um, I prefer like the, the regular ground chicken um, because just chicken breast I find is really, really, really bland. Um, so we're just gonna add that. Let me just go um, wash my hands real quick. I really wanna redesign this kitchen so that I have a sink right here. I think I say that every time too. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder if my parents will let me just totally redesign their kitchen so it works for my cooking videos. What do you guys think? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna add one egg or a flax or a chia egg. It doesn't really matter. This is acting as a binder. But you know what, I think I forgot to mention before that we need garlic. It's a Greek recipe. Of course we need garlic. We need garlic, we need lemon, we need oregano. Of course, right? And we're just adding all of this together to the one bowl. Very, very simple. So we've got the chicken, we've got a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm gonna use my microplane over here. And so for those of you who haven't seen me use this before, I'm literally just taking the ends of the garlic off. And once you take the little end of the garlic off, it peels really easily. It just 
And this one's a little bit green, so older garlic is gonna peel more easily anyway. And so I'm using two pretty big pieces of garlic. You can use as much garlic as you want, but I like these a little bit garlicky. Um, it's important that you are seasoning your meatballs really well, especially if whatever you're cooking it with isn't you know, really well seasoned. Um, take the lid off of my microplane, would be helpful. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna grate it on there. Microplane's super helpful because there's none of the, um, there we go. There's none of the like, you know, having to take the pieces out of the garlic press or anything like that. I find a garlic press just annoying. And anything that I can do to make cooking less annoying, the better, right? <laughs> I was on a podcast interview this week um, and she asked me, how do, how do I, you know, teach people to not hate cooking as much. And I'm like, I can't teach you zesting a lemon. About half a lemon is what I'm gonna use. Um, I, can't, I can't teach you how to hate cooking, but I can teach you how to make it more efficient so it doesn't feel so burdensome. And just having a couple tools that help you out, like a sharp knife and a microplane, they make a difference. I say it again, probably every week, but it really does make a difference. So I'm just zesting about half of this lemon and I'm adding that in there. So right now, all we've got in here is the chicken, the egg, the zest of about half of a lemon, Notice we haven't mixed anything together. We're not doing anything crazy. This is super, super easy. And I can see over here that my orzo is simmering. And we're just gonna let that keep simmering and watch that as we make these meatballs. I am going to cut this lemon in half and I'm going to add the juice of half a lemon. Where's my little juicer? My other favorite tool is this mini colander. Just collects those seeds right there. So I'm gonna use the zest and juice of about you know what, I'm gonna use a full lemon. I like adding the juice of a full lemon because like, like I mentioned, chicken is not super flavorful by itself. So we wanna add that flavor into the chicken. The reason why using chicken and turkey for meatballs is so awesome is because you can make it taste like whatever you want to. <laughs> it's like the most versatile thing ever. Um, okay, I'm gonna add about half of a teaspoon. Um, I'm not gonna measure because we don't need to, about half to three quarters of a teaspoon of dried oregano. Alternately, you could use some dill as well. Dill is delicious in this. Um, a little tiny bit of black pepper. Usually I use fresh cracked, but for this, this works better because you don't want like big pieces of pepper in your meatballs. And I am gonna measure this just because I wanna make sure that I have a good half of a teaspoon. Actually, I'm gonna do a heaping half of a teaspoon of salt, okay? because we wanna make sure they're well seasoned. And that's it, you guys. Oh, can't forget our almond flour. We're gonna use about a half of a cup of almond flour or panko breadcrumbs. And <clears throat> I'm just measuring this out to make sure that there is enough. And then we're just gonna mix it all together. Super easy. Okay, so I'm gonna use a fork just for the initial mixing, just to make sure that egg yolk is mixed in there. I'm just gonna use that fork to start and then I'm going to form these with my hands. I've got a little bit of a mess over here, but I'm gonna go grab a plate and we will put them on the plate. I'm also gonna grab a little bowl of water and you will see why. All right, got my plate. You could put these directly onto the pan if you wanted to, but I'm gonna put them on the plate first to show you size and all that jazz. and a small bowl of water. Small kitchen space over here, so sometimes I've gotta go grab things. All right, so we're mixing this together with a fork just until combined, and then we're gonna form them into little meatballs. Now, you can make these as big or as small as you want, but warning, you don't wanna make them too big, because if you make them too big, then it's very easy to overcook the orzo while you're waiting for the meatballs to cook. If you want this to be a one pot meal, then we want them to be about one inch meatballs. If you wanna make them really, really small, it's actually really fun for kids. I've done that before. Um, we'll be here for a while if I do that. <laughs> so I'm gonna make them medium size today, but it's fun to make them really small. Like imagine um, kind of Italian wedding soup, which is another one of my favorites. We might do that for a cook with Chris. Um, I love putting orzo in that as well. You can put any sort of pasta in that. Okay, so. It's all mixed together, looks great, okay? But it is deceivingly sticky. So that's why I like to have a little bowl of water on hand, okay? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water 
on my hands and it's just gonna kind of make my hands non-stick. So I'm gonna take a little bit. It is very delicate. The reason why you wanna add the egg or the flax egg is because it's what's gonna help keep it together. Um, the almond flour or the breadcrumbs will also help to keep it together to some extent, but they're mostly, um, it's mostly to keep it nice and moist, um, especially because it's chicken. A chicken doesn't have a ton of fat in it. Um, so you want something to keep it moist so that, um, you know, so they don't dry out. We don't want them to dry out. The nice thing is you're actually steaming these meatballs and that's also gonna help to keep them moist. And I've said the word that tons of people hate. My sister would be so unhappy with me right now, like four times in a row, but we're cooking. We want things moist. <laughs> All right, friends, I haven't checked any comments yet, but while I'm making meatballs, if you guys have any questions, questions about this recipe, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, or questions about cooking in general, I am happy to answer them. I'm gonna make as many of these meatballs as I can before I feel like I need to go ahead and open up <laughs> the orzo over here and make sure it's not uh, it's not overcooking over here. Ooh. Oh, I d forgot to mention too, um, when it comes to making the, if you're gonna use risotto instead of, or you know, the rice-based or uh, rice, chickpea-based orzo, um, they call it rice, but I think it looks like orzo. You just want to follow the package directions when it comes to the amount of liquid. So, I mean, that's pretty obvious, but I just want to make sure you guys know that. Oh, are any of you guys being killed by allergies? Um, <laughs> I woke up this morning and I know I'm not sick. You know, I don't have any other, you know, fever or any other symptoms like that. But woke up, woke up just like a little bit groggy and you know, a little bit uh, sniffly. And I'm like, oh, come on, you guys. My mom, I got here and she was like, so I heard it was gonna be a terrible allergy season. I'm like, oh yeah, I can tell. <laughs> so I'm trying not to sneeze on camera because that would be cute in a cooking video. And I'm sure my family would love that as I'm cooking for them. <laughs> but this is, this is real life, you guys. And Instagram, because it's a dark day here, they wanna, they wanna shut me off every time I every time I pause. All right, these meatballs are almost done and this is about the size I'm making them, okay? And I'm gonna make like two more and then I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'm gonna check on this orzo. Like I mentioned, you can do this all together. You don't have to cook the orzo first. You can get the orzo in the pot, add the water, put the meatballs on top, close it and cook it for about 15 minutes and it will cook. The meatballs only take about 10 minutes to cook when they're steamed like this. Um, and you'll you'll know that they're cooked. You just I just take one out and I cut it in half. And when it is cooked through, they're good to go. Super easy. Because they're small, if they're big, by the way, you wanna make sure that you are giving them extra time. One sec, I'm gonna go wash my hands. All right, and this makes about 20 meatballs. Um, so it makes a, a ton. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. I'm just gonna stir it because my orzo is about half cooked already over here. The perfect time to start putting some of these meatballs in. And by the way, if you end up with a little bit of extra liquid in the bottom, no worries, you can just simmer it with the cover off at the end and let some of that moisture cook off. It won't make a huge deal. Um, it's kind of hard to overcook the orzo when you're cooking it this way. So I'm gonna start adding these meatballs in and I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna turn you guys a little bit. You can't really see. But I'm just, I'm just putting them on top. The orzo is about half cooked. And I'm just arranging them. You just want to give them space so that they're not sticking to each other. Super easy. And once they are basically cooked, so after about 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the spinach in. So we can chop the spinach. Um, I usually add it in whole just because the easier the better, right? Um, I use baby spinach, so... All right, we've got those meatballs in there. Let's 
let's uh, make the rest of these over here. So I usually add it in whole. My kids like spinach, so that's fine. Um, if your kids don't like spinach, chop it up into really small pieces. Um, or you can always, you can always take the kids portion out and add, add it to the adult portion at the end. Um, the spinach takes about a minute to wilt down into it. It adds a little bit of fresh flavor to it and add some greens, which is always nice, right? There we go. I've never made, a, I don't think I've ever made meatballs on camera before, but it feels like pressure. I'm like, I gotta get them done. <laughs> All right, any questions you guys, throw them at me, send them to me, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> It's quiet here today. My sister is at work. My dad's at work, just my mom upstairs. My kiddos are at home with dad. It's nice though. I bet you mamas are like, come on. <laughs> it's your reminder to take some time for you this week, even if it just means just taking some time to cook without the kiddos around. It's pretty lovely. I'm just making sure that um, I'm not touching the actual orzo, if you guys can't tell. Um, I'm just moving them around so that there's a little bit of space between the meatballs because we want to make sure that they cook and they don't stick to each other. But we're not looking for perfection because we don't look for perfection at all around here. I just want you guys to feel more confident in the kitchen. The difference between panko and breadcrumbs, yes. So panko are breadcrumbs, they're just Japanese breadcrumbs. Um, so breadcrumbs often have a lot more ingredients in them and panko is typically just basically breadcrumbs and salt, typically. Every brand is a little bit different. Panko are Japanese breadcrumbs. They are a much thicker texture than your typical breadcrumbs. Um, and because they have fewer ingredients, they're a much thicker texture. I tend to like them better and I tend to use them better. Uh, use them more often. All right, the meatballs are done. So we just put the cover on over there. I'm gonna wash my hands again. And you know what? Let's do some fancy um, spinach chopping because we have about 10 minutes until these are done. So why not? All right. I'm gonna grab a little tiny cutting board here. I'm not securing my cutting board, but you should secure your cutting board. And I'm gonna grab my favorite knife, which is my vegetable knife. Now, I don't use this for anything large. I would never use this for something like a butternut squash or something like that, um, but for small things, for herbs, for just your general vegetables. Um, the vegetable knife is sharp and it's small and it's easy to use. So I absolutely love it. Okay, so this is my favorite way to cut spinach or basil or anything where you want those little um, thin strips. Okay, it's called chiffonade. So we're gonna take the spinach and you do not need to do this for this recipe. I'm just sharing it with you guys because I like teaching skills. So here's a new skill. This, I especially use it for basil, especially if it's gonna be a topping. Um, but for those of you who don't know, chiffonade, we're gonna go ahead and do it because we've got a couple minutes. We've got some time, right? All right, so I'm just going to take my spinach and I'm going to stack it. So you can stack as many as you want to. You just wanna be comfortable with it. I probably don't want more than that. If you don't want the ends, you could chop the ends off ends the side. Make sure when you're holding your knife, we're just gonna do a little mini knife lesson. You wanna choke the knife. Okay, so thumb on one side, forefinger on the other side. I know it feels weird to start, but you've got a lot more control when you're slicing like that than when you're back here, okay? So choke your knife. We're taking that pile, okay? And we are just rolling it up, okay? I've heard this referred to as like rolling a cigar. I've never rolled a cigar in my life and I don't actually know anyone who does, but if you know what that means, then maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe it's not, I have no idea. We're just gonna roll it up, <laughs> okay. And then we are gonna take our knife, you know, tip down and we're going to slice vertically, okay? And we're just gonna do as thick as you want or as thin as you want until we get down to the very end. And then we have these beautiful 
little strips. So works well when you want to put some greens. By the way, you can also use a food processor really quickly and just pulse it um, into something like a meatball or mini meatloaves or something like that where you want it nice and small and you want it to kind of melt in. Or if you want to serve this to kids and you want to put the spinach in and you actually want them to eat it, chiffonade works really well. So just a fun little tip. Super easy. You'll get used to it. And just make sure you're using the claw, which is what my, my seven-year-old likes to call it, the claw when you're slicing, because you are going pretty close to your fingers. But once you um, learn how to use, how to choke the knife correctly, if you don't already, um, it becomes so much easier to have control over the knife and you'll get way less nervous about the knife slipping. I mean, accidents happen, but they're less likely to happen when, when you know what you're doing, right? All right, we're looking good over here. I'm not actually looking at the time. I'm doing a very sloppy job of chiffonade over here right now, but I wanna make sure we're all done at the same time. So let's talk about a couple additions that you can make to this recipe. This is a very basic recipe. It's very simple, but it's very flavorful. And a couple things that I love to add to it, we're gonna add the feta at the very end, like I mentioned. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and crumble that in just a second. Um, I love to add the spinach. We'll add the spinach once these are basically cooked. We're gonna add the spinach to it and just let the fat wilt down. We are going to add the feta at the end. I love adding sun-dried tomatoes to it. Now I'm serving my sister tonight and she's allergic to tomatoes, so we will not be doing that today. If you like a little bit of the saltiness, the brininess, um, Kalamata olives are a beautiful addition to this as well. Like I mentioned, you can use any sort of um, fresh herbs if you would like. If you wanna use fresh dill, fresh dill works really well. Fresh basil or oregano sprinkled on the top is really great. I don't recommend sprinkling raw oregano on the top. That's a bit intense. Um, but sprinkling dill or basil on the top is a really beautiful addition as well. Okay, so this is about a cup of spinach. I'm gonna do a little bit more and then I'm gonna go ahead and crumble our feta in the brine. By the way, um, when you buy feta in the brine, for those of you who don't know, you don't wanna just take it out of the brine and crumble it and leave it in your fridge. You wanna make sure you keep it in the brine until you are ready to use it. Um, by the way, this is the sloppy way to do the chiffonade. <laughs> you, just, you just roll it all together, which is honestly what I do most of the time. It's kind of like a half, we're gonna call it a half chiffonade. We're gonna make that up. <laughs> And I don't care about the stems and my kids typically don't either. So um, yeah, you wanna, keep the, you wanna keep the feta in the brine because that's what's gonna keep it longer. Um, and it will go bad really fast if you take it out of the brine because it's fresh. All right, so we've got our spinach ready to go. Fancy spinach, but again, you can just throw the spinach on in there. It doesn't need to be fancy. I'm gonna grab another bowl. And we're gonna go ahead and take this feta. And I'm using about a quarter cup. It's whatever is left from uh, recipe testing this weekend. And I'm gonna take it out of the brine. And we're just gonna crumble it. You can crumble it with your hands. I'm just using a fork to avoid getting too messy. <laughs> and then I'm gonna check on our meatballs over here. They're looking pretty, pretty good. The orzo is looking almost cooked. I'm gonna stir it to make sure that liquid um, is hitting the tops of the orzo because I can see it looks like there's a few spots where the orzo isn't quite cooked and I will share with you how to tell if the orzo isn't quite cooked yet in just one second. Okay, our feta is all crumbled, ready to go, ready to sprinkle on top. And we're just gonna go ahead. Okay, orzo is looking good, okay. So I'm not gonna taste the orzo right now because remember we put raw chicken in there so we wanna make sure the chicken is fully, fully cooked before we do that. But I've got a piece here to show you. Hopefully you guys can see and I'll stir the rest of it in just a second. With any pasta, okay, I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this. With any pasta, can you see that? Maybe not. Okay, I'm trying. <laughs> Okay, the end of it, the tip of it, is just a little bit white. Um, and if you were to cut it in half, I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see this, but if you were to cut it in half, 
the middle still has a little circle of white in the center. When that circle of white in the center is gone um, and it's the same color throughout, then it's done. Same thing with any pasta. You don't actually have to throw the spaghetti against the wall and um, never once in culinary school were they like, you need to throw things around the kitchen and that's how you know something is done. <laughs> Seems dangerous. Um, so no, don't throw your orzo against the wall. Just take a piece. <laughs> and uh, if it's still got that little bit of white in it, then it's not quite done yet. And you might just need to stir it to make sure the liquid gets throughout. And that is what I'm doing. So my meatballs are also kind of, when I stir this around, they're popping up a little bit, which tells me that they are in one piece, which means, okay, we're back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I accidentally clicked out of the app for a second there. All right, we are almost done over here. Just gonna give it one second. One minute, we're gonna stir it. I'm gonna go grab a bowl. I told you guys this is gonna come together so quickly. It's been 30 minutes that we've been on here chatting. And uh, while I've been making this, dinner doesn't have to be hard, okay? Your weeknight dinners should not stress you out. That's why I love talking about meal prep and I love talking about easy dinners because it just makes life so much easier when it's one less thing to stress about, right? No need to stress about dinner. I'm here for more 15 minute dinners. All right, I'm gonna cover this, let it cook for another couple of minutes to make sure those chicken meatballs are all cooked and all done. I'm gonna grab a bowl so I can show it to you guys in just a sec, and then I'll share with you guys what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so next week I am going to, yeah, next week, yeah, next week I'm going to make one of my favorite Italian dishes. I'm gonna make chicken piccata. I'm gonna give you a gluten-free option and just and share with you the regular version as well. So we're gonna make a really simple chicken piccata recipe and you can serve that with whatever side you wanna serve it with. Um, so oftentimes it's pasta, orzo is a great side, vegetables, whatever you wanna serve that with. So I'm gonna make some chicken piccata next week and the week after that, I guess we're going kind of Mediterranean this month. I didn't even, consider that, but um, it's my favorite type of cuisine. It is where I fell in love with cooking in the south of Italy, so that's what we're making. Um, so, and then we're gonna make pasta carbonara, which is actually the first dish that I ever made in a professional kitchen with this incredible chef that I learned to, the first chef I ever learned to cook from when I lived in the south of Italy when I was uh, 19, when I was 19. Um, so we're gonna make pasta carbonara and, you know, Hopefully I, uh, I do Rosa's version justice, but I'm gonna make that at the end of the month. And then in May and probably next week, I'm gonna have you guys vote on what you guys want me to cook in May. We're gonna take a break over the summer from Cook with Chris just because it gets a little crazy around here. My husband's a sailor, so his schedule is absolutely insane throughout the summertime. Um, so in next month, the month of May is gonna be the last month of Cook with Chris for a couple of months. So I'm gonna have you guys vote on what you guys want me to cook over the next month. So stay tuned, look out into st in stories um, for, I'm just gonna check on this. I think it's about time. It's almost time. It's almost time to add the spinach. I'm just gonna check the meatballs. Um, so look out in my stories. Remember, I always put the recipes in stories after I cook. Okay, the chicken meatballs are pretty much done. I'm gonna add the spinach and we'll give it one more minute. Um, so I always put the recipes in stories afterwards. And I've gotten asked this a few times, but there is going to be an option um, coming up in the fall for you guys to cook right alongside me. So that's coming. I'm just adding the spinach, the chiffonade spinach right on top. You can season this if you want to. Um, the orzo is pretty well seasoned, so I don't think it needs it, but totally up to you. And we're also adding feta on top, which adds some more salt. So remember, we want our food well seasoned, but not, uh, we want it well seasoned, but we don't want it salty, right? Okay. We talked about layering salt a few weeks ago. Actually, I think that was a couple months ago at this point, but time flies, right? Okay. We're going to cover this up. So yeah, so make sure to check in with my stories on Thursday. So next week, I'll ask you guys to vote on what you guys want me to cook in May. Um, we're kind of getting into late spring, almost early summer around here in May. So I'm thinking 
some summery recipes, maybe some seafood recipes. Um, you guys let me know. So you'll be able to vote and then you'll also be able to ask me to cook whatever you want me to cook. I don't know how to cook everything in the world, but I can cook a lot. <laughs> so, so I'll give you guys a couple options and you guys can tell me if there's anything specific that you want me to cook. Okay, over here, the allergies are getting the best of me now. You can kind of see it's starting to wilt down. Any sort of greens take probably take less time than you think they do to actually wilt in. So it's such a great kind of like nutrient dense, healthy um, addition to just add some greens to the end of whatever you're cooking. So if you're making a soup or a stew or a chili, greens melt on into it. Obviously this is orzo and meatballs. You're gonna see the spinach on top in this case, um, but it's so easy to add greens to a recipe and they melt on in. And if you don't want your greens to taste like greens, by the way, add some lemon juice. Lemon juice cuts the bitterness of greens. Um, a lot of people just add a ton of salt to it and they just taste like salty greens. The acid is what is going to cut the bitterness. Um, when we talk about the foundations of flavor, when we talk about the, dip, the five tastes, so sweet, salty, bitter, sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and umami. Bitter and sour are opposite, they cancel each other out, so the sour is, which is contrary to what a lot of people think, but they do. All right, so think of like chocolate and raspberries or chocolate and orange. They complement each other, right? All right, we're just gonna stir this up. We're stirring up the orzo with the spinach and it's actually starting to stick a tiny bit to the bottom, which indicates to me that that orzo is done. <laughs> And the spinach is wilted in and the meatballs we already checked but i always check the one of the bigger meatballs to make sure it is cooked through before we go ahead and serve it to our family members and i did start the orzo ahead of time you guys know that um but if you cooked it all together it probably takes about 15 minutes with the cover on everything all together all right i'm just going to stir it i'll show you this big pan over here let me just grab a cooking rag. So, actually, no, this has a handle. We're good. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to show you guys that. Look at that, look at how delicious that is. You could serve it right at the table, just like that, if you wanted to. I'm gonna put it in a bowl and show you guys what it looks like. In a bowl, we'll garnish it with a little bit of feta. I got a piece of spinach in that bowl. And we have a delicious one pan weeknight recipe comes together in about 25 minutes from start to finish when you are not chatting with a bunch of people on Instagram. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I need to turn this off. No wonder it's still cooking. I haven't actually turned the stove off. <laughs> I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago, like I don't, I don't know how I used to cook like 16 meals for people as a personal chef. It was seven years ago. That was before mom brain. <laughs> I'm kidding, I could do it. All right. You add a couple meatballs on top here. Looks so good. The spinach and the orzo, and we will add a little bit of feta on top. Feel free to add those sun-dried tomatoes. If you would like to add a little something extra, add some Kalamata olives add some fresh dill, add some fresh basil. All right, there you have it. Look at that, you guys. Does that look delicious? Okay, let's try it. Actually, I'm gonna try it out of the pan because this is too pretty. Mmm. So good, so good. Yep, um, I post the recipe to my story. So I'm gonna post the recipe in just a couple minutes once we're done, which I think we are. So I'm gonna post the recipe over to my stories. Um, whenever I do these Cook with Chris's, I always post the recipe to my stories. Um, and like I said, next week, I'm going to put up some options to vote on what you guys want me to cook in May. So May is going to be reader's choice. So you guys can um, offer suggestions if there are things you want to learn how to cook, um, or you can vote on the things that I already have kind of in my mind that I would love to share with you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here, whether you are on live with me or you're watching the replay later. I love cooking with you guys. I hope you guys all have a beautiful week and I will see you next week for Chicken Picata. All right guys, have a beautiful week.